welcome back to Trail Tales. This time we're hiking in southwest Austria. We started our day at the Lunasee Bahn, a cable car that would take us up from the car park to the top of the dam. This cost us around 19 euros each, with another 5 euros for parking, but saved us over an hour and a half of hiking. Our planned hike would take us around the reservoir, up over a ridge line, and across the border into Switzerland, and finally summiting a peak overlooking Lake Lune, or Lunasee in German, before heading back down again for a total of around 11 kilometers. This was the plan at least, but things went a little differently for us. This plan was already a fallback, since the Lechweg we'd hoped to hike was completely closed due to snow. We were hiking in May, so while it was bright, sunny, and a balmy 15 degrees, there was still significant ice and snow at higher elevations. Once we arrived at the top, we were much more exposed to the elements, and the strong wind was blowing. After slapping on some sunscreen, we set off southwards, skirting the reservoir. Constructed in 1958, this dam raised the level of the natural lake by over 70 meters, and it now feeds four hydroelectric power stations, providing green energy for four Alberg. At the two and a half kilometer mark, we turned away from the lake, heading southwards. Babbling brooks broke the stillness when the strong winds fell, and while directions were generally good at first, with signs and trail markers leading the way, the path became unclear in places due to meltwater carving its way down the hill, making fake paths. So we had to refer to the route in all trails, quite frequently. The cliffs before us had striking red streaks running through them, and below the sheer rock face was an alarmingly large boulder field. Fortunately for us, our route took us away from the boulder field, up a steep, grassy slope. There were still several huge chunks of slippery ice to negotiate, with meltwater rushing beneath them, and no way to tell how strong the ice beneath our feet really was. Before too long, we'd crested the ridge, and we were met with the Swiss border. To me, this is a very common European affair. To have an unguarded border that anyone can cross without a passport at any time is quite a striking symbol of trust and unity, something I admire. The clouds moved in, covering the sun, and the once refreshing wind now chilled our bones. We had to layer up and press onwards. The trail followed the ridge line only briefly before descending slightly on the Swiss side, round a blind corner and down into a beautiful valley. At 2,000 meters elevation, we didn't feel that short of breath, but we found that we'd just been warming up. On word of warning, the blue and white signs signify a shift from just hiking to mountain climbing, and generally involve scrambling on all fours, or even climbing up rock faces. However, the reviews of the trail said that it was moderate, so we thought little of it and pressed on. The path took us along the side of the ridge, and the valley dropped away from us as we pressed on. We've just passed 2,200 meters. It's another 200 meters up to go. But this will be our last ascent for today. When we head back down to the cable car. Looking up to the mountains and then comparing on the map where we should be going, we couldn't figure out where the route would take us. There seemed to be no way over the top. The higher we got, the steeper it got. We twisted and turned, switchback after switchback, until, after climbing a grueling 60% gradient, the path ended and the scramble began. Hiking to a summit can be very rewarding, but it is only really enjoyable when everyone in the group feels safe and confident that they can make it. While it was a shame we didn't crest the ridge, ultimately the, ter ultimately the terrain beat us. The snow and loose scree had robbed us of that sense of security and confidence. We just couldn't hold on to the mountain. It had stopped being enjoyable and we decided that we could proceed no further. Part of our decision was also the unknown conditions on the peak. While we were on a south facing cliff, basking in sunlight, removing most of the ice, the summit was on the other side and shaded too. With ice and snow causing problems for us at lower elevations, it would surely be worse higher up. So learn from our mistakes 
If you're going to hike in the Austrian Alps in May or earlier, be prepared for significant snow and ice to impact your route. Below us, a family were following in our footsteps. As we turned back, they asked us about the conditions up ahead. They confided that not everyone in their party had climbing experience, some of them were afraid of heights, and they too decided to turn back. All of us were now racing against the clock not only to make it to the last cable car down to the car park, but to beat the angry looking rain cloud that had been slowly making its way towards us all afternoon. This was a truly breathtaking hike, and this video just doesn't do it justice. I would strongly recommend it to anyone looking for a scenic hike in southwest Austria. The endless peaks and valleys visible from the ridgeline were remarkable. There appeared to be little evidence of civilization all the way to the horizon. The strikingly blue water of the reservoir, so common in the Alps, never gets old, and the sheer cliffs really add a lot of drama to the landscape. Our route back took us to where we came for the most part, this time down the steep cliff, up the valley, and back across the border into Austria. Once we reached the lake we turned west, since the half of the lake we'd not walked didn't have as much elevation change, and at this point we were very tired, having hustled back. In the end we walked 14.6 kilometers and climbed up over 800 meters. The whole thing took us five and a half hours and we burned around two and a half thousand calories. Our trail on the map looks a lot like we nearly made it, but there was so much snow at the top we really had no idea whether we would have made it or not. The hike was more challenging than it would have been later in the year, but I'd still consider this the upper end of moderate, even later in the summer. The steep gradients, the altitude, the elevation gain, and the scrambling put this past hiking and into mountain climbing territory, so adjust your expectations accordingly. That said, there are many other routes in the area, both more and less challenging, so whatever your level experience, there's something here for you. Thanks for watching. Please consider leaving a like and let me know in the comments what your favorite part of the trail was. I'm always happy to answer any questions you may have about the hike. I'll leave the All Trails link in the description if you want to tackle it yourself. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more content.